If you're using Affinity, you probably got the message that there is a new version available. In this video, I'm not going to dive into each new feature of version 2.6, but will only focus on the main noticeable changes in Affinity Photo. Of course, we have to start with the coolest feature, the object selection. I think this made a lot of Affinity users happy to finally see Affinity do some catch up with Photoshop on selection tools. Personally, I think it's not really in par with what Photoshop can do, but it is definitely a step in the right direction. It uses a local model, which first needs to be downloaded from the settings. I also like that Affinity explicitly states that no data is shared or used with Affinity, which is a triple thumbs up for Affinity. Once the models are installed, we can enable the tool from the toolbar. I'm not sure what the icon should represent, but I think it's an owl. Do keep in mind that the pixel or image layer should be selected in order to get it working. I think it would be great to have some kind of a current layer and below feature for this in the future. It works pretty straightforward. It highlights the area it detects and there are some modifiers to split the detected area in smaller areas. In the system that I'm using right now, it is kind of buggy. As you can see, the highlighted areas become invisible after 2 seconds. The actual object detection works quite well. For example, in the smaller image, where there is no good separation between the background and the object, it still does a very good job. When we preview the selection by pressing the Refine Mask button, you probably would agree with me that the final mask it creates is definitely not perfect. We probably would need to spend some extra time fine-tuning it. All in all, it is great to see Affinity utilizing machine learning to help us speed up our workflow. Related to the object selection is of course the Select Subject feature, which can be found under the Select menu. Basically, it is an auto-object selection. The algorithm auto-selects what it thinks is the main subject in the selected layer. Just as the object selection, it works pretty decent and is something I will definitely will be using. The Note tool in Affinity Photo also got a small power up. Now you can quickly change the note type by double clicking on it. Also removing a Bezier note can be quickly achieved by double clicking or using the Alt key modifier with a single click. Whatever works best for you. A nice to have feature we have with version 2.6 is that the color picker immediately applies the selected color to the selected layer object. Notice when I select a color now, the circle gets filled in. If you prefer the alt method, where the color goes into the color sampler first, you can use the alt key modifier while clicking. Pretty neat. A big change, but a welcome change to new users is how image layers are treated with pixel tools. In the past, a selection could not be removed from an image layer. Affinity would remove the whole layer instead, which did not feel very logical for a new user. Now, when you remove a selection from a pixel layer, it removes the selection from the image layer by applying a mask. Duplicating a selection also works. It just creates a new pixel layer from your selection. And actually, you can change that behavior in the assistant settings. I think this will definitely help out new users, because the way image layers worked with the pixel tools felt always a bit awkward. With this new update, a lot of pixel tools have been updated to work with image layers. Just to give you another example, you can paint on an image layer directly without the need of manually adding a pixel layer, or erase a part of it. Affinity now takes care of it. Finally, we have some quality of life improvements which are always welcome. For example, we can now search for a brush in the brush panel. Very helpful if you have a lot of brushes. One downside is that the search only works in the active category. I think it would have been nice to search in all the categories. Other quality of life improvements which I want to quickly highlight are the following. You can now quickly reset a mask in the layers panel by using the clear fill mask options when you right click on a mask. I'm not 100% sure, but maybe the invert mask is also new. When you use the in painting or the healing brush, 
Affinity will now remember the current layer or the current layer and below setting for you between session, which I think is very welcome. By far, one of the most favorite quality of life feature for me is the ability to escape the text input without clicking. This really helps me quickly switch to another tool without the need to use a mouse. I think the escape key also worked in the past, but somehow Control Enter feels more natural. If you're recording macros, which as you know, I do from time to time for you guys, good news, we have more options in the menu, which can be recorded now, which include the ability to set the tag color of a layer, but also use a layer as a masking layer or a clipping layer. Finally, something I actually never noticed, but when you use the curves adjustment and set the mode to gray, it directly applies without the need to change the curve. As mentioned, this release is quite a big release with a lot of incremental updates, not only in Affinity Falto, but also in Designer and Publisher. All in all, this is a pretty sweet update, and hopefully new updates and bug fixes will follow soon. Thanks again for tuning in, and smash the like and subscribe buttons before you leave. See you in the next video.